Alright, so the theme for this team is to basically have a Call Darkness team uh, with the Nightshade Sproutling using Nature's Ward. Because, for those of you who don't know, uh, Nature's Ward actually works on the Sproutling if he uses it under Darkness. Like, it doesn't get cut in half due to Call Darkness. So, you're able to heal, but your opponent can't. And Nightshade Sproutling is really good. Uh, blinding Poison on a fast pet is really good. <laughs> uh, I just I just said good two times in like two different sentences. That's that's bad grammar. Uh, he also has Lash, uh, which is pretty nifty for destroying MPDs. But there's no he's not a decoy breaker. Actually, the Bone Serpent's a lot better at destroying MPDs. So. Uh, this team worked out a lot better than I thought it would. It was pretty good. Uh, the Bone Serpent, of course, is just really good on his own. He does a crap ton of damage, and uh, he's undead. And he has a really high attack power value. He's just a, a pretty good pet, kind of overpowered, actually. And then the Widget Departed. I could have just ran two Bone Serpents, and that would have worked better. But I, I like to have some kind of diversity. It's still an undead pet, just because I really like the racial, uh, because it's overpowered. And I'm going against a lot of good teams, so, you know, you don't want to take all the advantages you can get. A crow would probably work really good here, but crows don't have the undead racial. Uh, Widget Departed doesn't hit as hard as a Bone Serpent, since he doesn't have Nocturnal Strike, but he does have Spectral Strike, which uh, doesn't hit as hard for some reason. They both, they both have three-round cooldowns, but for some reason, Spectral Strike doesn't have the same amount of damage. It doesn't make any sense. It just straight up just doesn't hit as hard. Even though its requirements are basically the same. 50% hit chance, they need to be blinded for it to always hit. And it just straight up just does less damage than Nocturnal Strike. I mean, I know uh, Bone Serpent has more attack power, but that shouldn't account for a 200 difference in damage. Or I guess it's not really 200. Uh, Nocturnal Strike does hit harder, though. Spectral Strike is just a legit weaker version, plus it doesn't hit as hard against Mechanicals, which you do run into a lot, while Nocturnal Strike just doesn't hit hard against uh, Dragons, which you don't really see very often, but it hits really hard against Aquatics, which you do see pretty often. Uh, Spectral Strike <laughs> doesn't hit hard against pets that you see a lot, and does hit hard against pets you don't see a lot, so they're like both complete opposites of each other. Nocturnal Strike is just a straight up better ability to use with Darkness. But Widget Tartan has a pretty good basic attack, where if he's faster than your opponent, since he is an SS type, it's basically like an Alpha Strike, but for uh, beast damage, which is pretty good against all those critters you run into. Kind of. Usually the critters are faster than him, but it's still pretty good. He's not a bad pet. Alright, so for this first team here, uh, looks like the MPD is probably going to give us some problems. Maybe. Kind of. Not really. I'm just going to go straight for my seedling and go straight for a lash. I know he's going to go for a decoy. But I know I could do a crap ton of damage to him really quick. Even more if it had triple hit, but it didn't. I go for my nature's ward right there. So I knew he was going to go for his little AoE and I wanted to have some kind of healing while I spend two turns to get rid of his decoy. Since my decoy breaker is on the back line, I don't want to bring him out yet. So I go for the blinding poison once that's gone. It'll give me two turns to attack him. Since it seems like this NPD is not going to be switching out anytime soon, he's just going to stay in and breath and then Thunderbolt off cooldown. Which is not a half bad strategy, but uh, it's going to be great for me since I have that type advantage against him. I don't think I get a single triple hit in this game. All of my lashes are double hits. Uh, I think I get one like towards the end, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to kill him. If I'd gotten like one triple hit, I probably could have killed him a turn earlier, but it doesn't really matter because I'm faster than him, so... It's all good. Now this Ragnaros is out, I'm going to go straight for the Blinding Poison. And then I think I'm just going to heal and then retreat. And then let someone else deal with him. I think that's how this goes down. I don't really remember. Yeah. Looks like I'm retreating. It looks like he's trying to set up the Conflagration combo. So Flamethrower first. And Puck is going to die. There's no way he can survive that. What I really should have did was go for the Darkness Nocturnal Strike combo right off the bat instead of playing him like normal. Where you use Bone Barrage first and then you... Uh, interweave the other two cooldowns with Bone Barrage since it has a one turn cooldown. So I was able to get off one Darkness, but if I went for both of them, 
it probably would have did a lot more damage. Especially since I don't really need Bone Barrage out since the decoy is already gone. So I go into my QB and I just go for a Call Darkness. If I went for a Spectral Strike, it doesn't actually gain the benefit of Darkness, so it wouldn't have worked. So just going for uh, Call Darkness itself, even though it does a little bit less damage. Uh, was the correct choice right there. And then we have the Fossilized Hatchling, who I can use my Spectral Strike on, no problem. He also hit me pretty, pretty damn hard, so I'm just going to go for a Pounce, my Alpha Strike, which should do some nice damage. And I have my Seedling in the back row, who was able to heal up to almost full under Darkness. Look, look at him trying to heal under Darkness, that does nothing. I mean, it was a, the good move to do, I would have done it too in that situation since I was in my turn of immunity, but, you know, I was able to heal up to full and he got a half heal out of that. So I go for my blind, that way you can't hit me for two turns while I get two turns of hitting him with Impute And I get a triple hit, the only triple hit of the match, and it was enough to finish him off. I would have beaten him either way without that triple hit, but this does give me a larger margin of error to deal with so I don't have to worry about lucky crits because that has happened before I have lost the bet due to like a couple of crits in a row this next one it's a pretty short one actually I go straight for the blinding poison because uh, I know he's gonna try to go for some kind of you know thunderbolt or something and I was gonna go for lashes uh, because I have a really nice type advantage against him and I even get a triple hit that's almost like half his health right there in one attack he goes for another cooldown based ability while he's still blinded, which is uh, not a very smart thing to do. I decide to go for my nature's board right here. That way I could heal up a little bit, but it doesn't really matter because I think this is when he takes off. I, I would have won that match pretty, pretty easily. This next one, this is the doozy. He has two of the most overpowered pets in the game on his team. Plus the Unborn Valk, who's also really good. He has a, a blind dodge team where they throw out... <clears throat> my bad. They have a haunt dodge team. Where they throw out a haunt and then just block for turns. All it does is taking damage. So, I go for the Blinding Poison. Uh, I knew he was going to go straight into the combo. There's no need to play head games with him. And I was able to get him to waste his cooldown on Curse of Doom, which is great. Now all I have to do is worry about the haunt. And I have my dot up which should heal for more than the dot does damage. He goes into the Terra Call Hatchling, and I have a terrible matchup because my abilities require me to be faster. So, I go into the Bone Hatchling Puck uh, because Bone Barrage can actually hit, I mean, can be applied even though he's dodging, and Darkness is going to be great against him. I also don't have a move-based ability like my other guy does. Uh, the Darkness will reduce his healing in half, but my healing will remain unaffected, and I can basically just take him out in the next two turns. Uh, turns out, the Bone Serpent, really good against the Tarot Claw Hatchling. He really should have like switched out or something, but uh, once this Nocturnal Strike hits, that's game over for him. <laughs> 700 damage. All because of that nice uh, Darkness combo. And then his Unborn Hatchling comes out. Is that what it's called? Unborn Valk? Yeah, there we go. And I'm just going to go for a couple of turns. He missed under Darkness, which was pretty cool, but I couldn't really take advantage of it because I had already uh, got onto my turn cooldown. And then he goes into his MPD while I throw out my Bone Barrage, which is perfect because now I don't have to worry about Decoy. So I go straight for a Lash. It hits three times and almost completely kills him. He has his Decoy out, so I'm just going to refresh my Nature's Ward because I know the Bones will be able to take care of it. And then I just go for my lashes to try to kill him, but he switched out, which is fine. Now that the Unborn Valk's out, I'm going to go for the Blinding Poison. That way he misses his dots again. Looks like I was able to get him to force out another Curse of Doom. And then I'm just going to kill him with lashes. Uh, because that should be enough to take him out. He goes into MPD. Uh, that was a bad switch, but he's already in a really bad position. And I don't really see him coming back, even if he played perfectly. Especially since I just have such a good advantage on him. So I was able to take out his MPD and then his Unborn Valk comes out and this is this is game over. I have two pets almost at full health. And he has one who only needed to hit once. And he doesn't, he'd have to basically one shot both of our pets in order to force a draw. But then my other one's an undead so that wouldn't have happened. 